Holy freaking gosh. What's up, guys? It's a massive, massive, huge day because I have in front of me here the grail of all grails. And I'm being completely serious. The grail of all grails. Probably the one knife that the highest percentage of knife collectors would say is their grail. Um, we're going to open it up. Please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, look down there and make sure that you are, please. Follow me on Instagram, too, if you would like. Duties underscore daggers. I've wanted one... I've, well, I can't say that I've wanted one of these for, for a long time. I've wanted to check one out for a long time. Um, but only in the last month or... Probably about... Just about a month, actually, have I really, uh, really wanted one. Um... I think it kind of took me a while to kind of mature as a knife guy to come to the point where it was time for me to buy this. And I don't know if that's the case for most knife guys or, or if most people, you know, wanted one since the beginning. Who knows? Let me know in the comments. But I'm unbelievably excited. This is also the most amount of money I've ever spent on a knife. Ugh. I sold a lot of knives. Well, not a lot. I sold, let's see, one, two, three. I sold six knives to be able to afford this. Um, so it didn't come right out of my wallet. Um, but I sold some knives I really didn't want to sell. So it was a sacrifice. Here we go, folks. Are you freaking ready? <laughs> Holy shit <laughs> Is there anything else in here? No. Holy freaking gosh. Chris Reeve. I can't believe I'm even looking at this box. I thought this box looked bigger in videos. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. Hi, Floki. Are you going to want to get out? Tell me now. Do you want to get out of the room? I better do it now because he's going to start whining when, right when I get into it here. Okay, here we go. Here we freaking go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The full experience. Here we go. What do we got? Large Sabenza. I don't know why it says Magna Cut. I'm pretty sure I got the S45VN version. Um, maybe maybe they gave me a Magna Cut one. I don't know. Uh, inlay. Natural canvas micarta. That's right, folks. Here's the blown apart knife. That's kind of cool. I like that. Oh, cool. It shows you the uh, the uh, degrees that they use for the for sharpening. So you can see here, it's a large Sebenza 31 in the drop point. That's what I got. Got a sticker. OK, all right. So the reason I went, well, let, let's just get, let's look at the knife first. Here we have um, some fluorinated grease. And I don't know what that little one is. Oh, Loctite, OK, and an Allen key. And looks like that's the knife right there. And we'll look at the rest of that later. Here we go, wrapped up. It's a little heavy. Let's unwrap this baby. <laughs> oh my gosh, here it is. It's here. It's actually not massive. It's big. It's not massive which is good. I was hoping that it was not going to be completely massive. So we have kind of like a, it looks like a side cut micarta or an end cut, something, some different kind of cut of the natural, natural canvas or uh, natural micarta. You know, it just looks different. It's, it's definitely fuzzy though. It's got a, a nice texture to it. It's not like the, the plasticky feeling crappy stuff. This is good stuff. 
Now, the Sabenza is the only um, Chris Reeve knife where the inlays are is one solid piece. Um, on the Umnumzan, I don't think they do inlays on that. And then on the Inkosi, it's like two separate little pieces of inlay on the show side, which I didn't really like. So that was the reason that I went with the Sabenza. I went with the inlaid version because it adds some contouring and adds some ergonomics, and it just looks really nice. We got to roll this thing open, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Is that not a sexy knife? Tell me that's not a sexy knife. Oh, the hollow grind. Look at this beauty. <laughs> I can't believe I'm holding this right now. Oh, that click. That click is excellente. Yeah, it's kind of a little choke up spot if you want it to be. You can choke up right there if you want. So, oh gosh, let's look at this thing. Let's freaking look at this thing. That's the lanyard. In fact, you know what I might do? Should I cut it off or should I take the knife apart and and uh, so it, it's on like a, ro a rotating little spacer in there. Should I just cut it off? I don't see myself ever selling this knife. I might as well just cut it off, right? You know what? There might be Chris Reeve fans out there that are going to cringe right now, but here we go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's what I think about you. Much better. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Eh, that's kind of annoying. Since it spins in there, you can hear it rattling now. I might end up putting a leather, a leather uh, lanyard on this. We'll see. So let's look at this knife. This is all uh, titanium. I believe they call it, look, it's like some kind of, oh, wait. You know what? It doesn't say the blade steel. So when I ordered this, I thought for sure it said S45VN. But on the card, it says it's MagnaCut. I'm going to have to email them because, I mean, if it says it here, it's got to be, right? And there's no markings on the blade anywhere, which I actually really like. But I just don't know which one it is. I would be honestly OK with either. I kind of wanted S45VN just because it's got a little bit of better edge retention than MagnaCut, and I don't really care about this being stainless. Um, but either way, I'd, I'd be fine. Oh, yeah. Now, can I thumb flick this? It's pretty tight right now. I don't think I can right now. But, um, you know, from everything I hear, um, these knives take a while to break in, and um, you are able to thumb flick them at some point, but um, I honestly really don't even care about that. That click open is so satisfying. It's a single thumb stud, which... Um, I don't know. I think it would look a little, maybe it might look a little better with, with uh, uh, double-sided thumb studs, but it's really not needed because you're not reverse flicking this thing. It's too, it's not a reverse flicker. It's just too stiff. Um, and if you're a lefty, you just take that out and switch it around to your side. So I don't really have an issue with that at all. Oh man, it's really easy to roll out. Very easy. 
This is actually a perfect size, man. I'm so glad I didn't get the mini. Or not the mini, the, uh, the small. I was kind of torn between the two uh, for a while. Um, you know, I like larger knives, but I don't like huge knives. This is perfect, dude. This really is perfect. Let's um let's do a few size comparisons really quick. PM2 just about the same, maybe slightly longer. Um 8020.5, definitely bigger than that one. Drop bear, shaman, about the same size as the shaman. So yeah, that's, that's, I'm very happy to see that. That is an excellent size. Pretty good low tip. Now, a lot of people I know are gonna wonder why I didn't get the Insingo blade shape, which is their sheep's foot. And, uh, you know, because I, I really like sheep's foot blades and, and worn cliffs. Um, number one, I think for this knife, the drop point looks better on it. It's just a classic knife look. It looks so good. I think the Insingo blade looks slightly weird. Not, not horrible. Definitely looks fine. But I just think this drop point looked a little better. Um, number two... This is a nice low, uh, low, low tipped drop point. So doing utility cuts is not gonna be too difficult with this at all. And there, yes, there will be a full testing on this knife. Um, I'm gonna do a full cut test with it. Chris Reeves warranty is excellent. And this is a user. So I'm going to, to put it through the, the full test. Absolutely. Um, gosh, it's smooth. Listen to that. Listen to that. <laughs> oh, I love it. So pretty interesting. The There's no lock bar insert. This is interesting. I've been wanting to look at this for so long. Yeah, so there's no lock bar insert. Um, the detent ball actually sticks up above the lock bar a little bit. And the detent ball is what's in contact with the tang of the blade. Um, so this titanium on the lock bar is not touching the steel of the tang, which is really weird. Um, trying to get a look at it here. Let's see. I don't know if you really be able to see but it's sticking up past uh, the top of the lock bar there a little bit. Maybe you can see it, I don't know. Um, I don't know why that is, except for the fact that, you know, titanium rubbing against steel over a long period of time will create some lock stick, and, you know, it'll start wearing down the titanium over time. So having the ceramic ball against the steel uh, el eliminates that. Um, Aside from that, I don't really know what the benefit is. And, that, uh, and I also don't know if they have always done that with the Sebenza or if that's a new innovation. Uh, I'm not sure. You can actually see on the lock bar right there, a little line where that ball rubs up on it. See that little line right there? That's where that uh, detent ball is rubbing on. I like this wide chamfer up here. That's nice. Just noticed that. Idaho made, baby. Got the Chris Reeve logo right there. That's the only billboarding is right there and right there. Excellent. Pocket clip is not deep carry, but it's it's decently deep carry. I think that, that'll be fine for me. Um, it looks like the inlay might interfere a little. Well, no. I was gonna say the inner the uh, inlay might interfere with you getting it in your pocket, but that's this is more than enough space um, to get it over your seam. 
That clip doesn't seem too strong at all. That seems perfect, actually. I can barely touch the edge right in here. Barely, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Like running my finger like this, I can't I can't hit it, so it's fine. Is this like a bead blast on the titanium? Some kind of blast. There's a number right there I just noticed. C22, right there. Don't know what that's referring to. This is freaking awesome, man. They do the lock bar relief cut on the inside, which is really good. So this is the first knife ever to have a frame lock. Um, if you don't know, I'm sure you do, but if you don't, Chris Reeve invented the lock bar. The titanium or steel lock bar. Um, first one ever. So this knife is iconic. This is absolutely an iconic knife. Hasn't really been improved on very much over the years, you know. It's pretty interesting. I mean, a lot of times these, these cuts in here are, are uh, not as wide. And I guess, I'm sure they could make these uh, thinner with the machines they have nowadays, but they just, they don't, and that's fine. I wonder, is there an over-travel stop? I don't think there is. I don't necessarily see that being a problem. If there is and I'm not seeing it, let me know. Look at how huge the stop pin is. Holy shit. Look at that thing. Massive. <laughs> That's sick. I like that. It's comfy. This is comfy. This knife makes me want to work with it. I can't wait to carry this at work this week. And for a long time coming. <laughs> Gosh, I can't believe I finally have one of these. Crown spine. Really nice jimping. Very nice jimping. Everything's very, very tight. The space between the scale and the blade there very tight. Everything is just real tight. So I want to I want to talk about a couple reasons why I decided to, to choose the Sebenza 31 over the Inkosi. Uh, because if you're watching this video, you might be deciding between the two yourself. Um, a couple of reasons. And I didn't go with the Umnumzan because that's much, not much bigger, but it's significantly, noticeably bigger than this knife. And I didn't want that. I didn't want it any bigger than this. So the Unumzan was out. So it was between the Inkosi and the Semenza. The Inkosi, uh, I mean, they, they look relatively similar. Um, both come in both blade shapes, the Insingo and the Drop Point. Um, one of the main reasons um, I didn't go with the Inkosi is it has a free spinning pivot. So if you want to adjust this knife or take it apart, you need two Allen keys on both sides, which is I, just totally dumb. <laughs> I cannot figure out why they would do that, but that's the case. Another thing, the stop pin here is free floating. So um, it's, it's just, it doesn't restrict this distance right here. So the only thing really holding the knife um, you know, restricting the distance this way and this way is the pivot up here on the, on the side of the knife. Um, I heard a few reviewers say that might mess with the smoothness of the action because depending on how you're holding the knife and squeezing it, that's the, the pivot in here is kind of pinching and moving very slightly. I don't know how true that is or how much you would even really notice it. Probably not. 
at all. Maybe slightly, but um, that was another reason I decided to go with this knife. Number three, it's just, you know, the history behind it, really. Um, you know, uh, this was the first knife with the frame lock. It's the Chris Reeve that's been around for the longest. And fourth, the solid inlay instead of the, the two pieces inlay. Um, and those are the main ones. Those are the main reasons. So, uh, but if you like the look of the Nkosi better, then that's fine. If you're, if you're fine with all those things that I mentioned, I believe the clips are very close to the same. Uh, I believe the Nkosi always comes with double thumb studs. Um, what else? It's got like a secondary little finger groove right here. Um, I watched Nick Shabazz review of the Nkosi. He said the large Nkosi was fine, but the small one was very not ergonomic. Um, so that's another reason. Um, this is just really nice. I'm really glad it's this size. I was, oh man, yeah. I was debating so fiercely in my head between the large and the small. I'm, I'm really glad I went with this one. I haven't even felt the edge yet. Whew. Yeah. Glassy. Look at how even that edge bevel is. Really nice. Excellent sharpening choil, too. Our plunge grind uh, begins to get thick right where my thing. Well, let me point with this. Starts to get thick right about way up here. And our edge termination's way down here. So that's excellente. Very, very nice. <laughs> this is epic, dude. Oh, man. That freaking click. So satisfying. <laughs> The lock bar axis is excellent too, look at that. They do it in a way where it doesn't really affect the ergonomics having this big cutout right here. Um, I'm not exactly sure how, I guess because the lock bar sticks out enough, it kind of like takes up that space. I love these wide chamfer. I already mentioned up here, but it, you know the wide chamfer comes around here, kind of gets thinner uh, right in here a little bit, and then goes back to wide around this curve, and then comes back to small over here. We got an inside edge chamfer all the way around. Love to see that. Interesting. There's two little milled lines on the outside of the the relief cutout. You see those little guys? Right there. I wonder why they did that. That's so weird. It seems like they're so small they wouldn't even really affect anything, but maybe. Amazing. Let's, um... Let's, uh... Let's freaking cut something. Where's my, uh... There it is. I want to cut something, I want to measure behind the edge, and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow, that's sharp. Oh, wowza. All right, calipers. Nineteen. 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 Yeah. That's not uh, crazy thin, but that's not overly thick at all. I usually think like twenty thousandths is kind of the max for me of like acceptable thickness behind the edge for an, an EDC knife, so that's fine. And because it's a hollow grind, um, it's just gonna slice even better, despite that being on the thicker side of acceptable. That's that's perfectly good. Can't wait to put this to work, man. Really can't wait. 
Now, I said before this arrived that um, people were asking me if it was going to be a user. And I said, if I get it in my hand, and I can immediately tell that this is something that's going to be sticking around in the collection, because I can usually tell. Either I'm positive that it's going to stick around in the collection, or I'm not quite sure, and it might leave. Um, if I'm not quite sure and I might end up selling it, I usually don't hard use it because I don't want to scratch it. I don't want to mess it up uh, for when I, if, when or if I do end up selling it. This, this is already in my mind 100% not going anywhere. So I can, I can use this and scratch it and not worry about anything. Perfectly centered. Gosh, look at that. Look how perfect that is. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging out with me on this occasion, folks. Um, I guess I'll, I'll tell you what um, what I told myself is you've always wanted to, you've, you know, you, you want this knife, right? You really want this knife. You have other knives that you don't really use a whole lot that you like but you don't use them a whole lot, why don't you just sell them so that you can get the Chris Reeve? You know? Just sell some knives. You might like them, you might love them, but they're probably knives that you can get another time. If you really end up missing them that much, you can save up and get them again. Just sell some knives and get yourself a Chris Reeve. Try it out. You know, why not? <laughs> I love you guys. Please like the video before you bounce out. I'd appreciate it, and... Um, I love you. Please, uh, well, I, I, I don't know. Please subscribe, I guess. I don't know why I said please. Um, all right. Adios.